Hey guys, so I have been building a template over the last month and a half and I've been sampling soft synths that are only available on the PC and creating sampler presets so that I can use it on the Mac, which is primarily what I produce on. So it just gives me more options of sounds and then I set up my favorite presets and go from there. So since I've been going through this process, I've been kind of fine-tuning the best way to approach doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the steps that I take. And there's plenty of ways to go about this. Uh, this is just a way for me that I found made things pretty quick. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a sound right here, just a, a lead sound. Here, let me uh, arm this here. <laughs> So there's our sound. That's our uh, synth sound. So we're going to make a sampler version of that. The first thing that I do is I make a, a MIDI clip, and each MIDI clip is going to going to play a different note. In this case, I'm I'm playing a different octave, and this is set to one bar. So it's going to play each note for a full bar, which will give us a good long note to work with. And up here, I've set the tempo down to 80 BPM. That way. Uh, you know, it plays longer notes, so this will give you plenty of time. Plus, what we're going to do is we'll we'll end up looping the uh, the sample so that it plays longer, and it'll sustain. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is come in here, and I'm going to want to make sure to turn off uh, Portamento, and make sure that the release, even if it's like a pad sound or whatever, turn the release all the way down, because we'll be able to recreate that that release sound later, and we don't want the sound carrying over from one note to the next when we're sampling. So that's pretty important. The next thing that I do is I copy this. And by the way, you don't have to just sample one note per octave. You can sample every single note if you want, which of course is going to take up a lot of uh, a lot of CPU and space. So uh, you know, just want to be you know careful with that. But if you really want something accurate, you sample more notes. So you might want to sample every three notes or every six notes or, you know, whatever sounds good to you. In this case, I'm just doing octaves just to give you a quick example of how this works. So once I've done that, I go ahead and duplicate that clip. And the second clip, I make it just the same, except I give it just a little carryover on the note because some presets on have two different tones. And when the notes kind of glide between each other, there's no transient or attack. It's kind of more smooth. And then when you hit the note just uh, just straight off, you're going to get that attack. So I like to have both of those options uh, in Sampler. In this case, I've already tested the lead sound, and both of these end up playing the same way. So we're not going to use it for this particular example. Once I've done these two here, I duplicate the track. And then I will go to and pick another sound, maybe a sound I've made or tweaked or a preset that I like. How about detune lead? That's fine. And this way, all you know the the MIDI clips are already you know put in. So I may go and just go through this process for as many presets as I was li I would like on on a certain synth, or or multiple synths for for that matter so I, I could I could go and do you know 20 I like to do them all at the same time for each process because it makes things go much quicker than doing them one at a time all the way through okay so in this example we'll just use uh, two and I'll go into this sound and make sure we have yeah the release is already down here and we don't have portamento on because we could always add that option uh, with sampler So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these and I will right click and freeze the track. And then I'm going to flatten the track. So that converts all these parts to audio. So I don't have to go through and record each part to a, a different track. I just freeze and flatten and the audio is all ready to go. Now what Ableton does sometimes is it will double the length of a clip because sometimes there's carryover and it wants to make sure that when you have the clip recorded that it, it 
it smoothly loops or what whatever. So in this case, it doesn't really matter too much, but we want to make sure that we, we shorten the loop to the original, which was um, 11 bars. I started on the, the C0 note and then just went up every octave all the way up to the top because C0 and below are probably not going to be used. So I'm just going to you know let one note take care of the bottom uh, octaves or whatever. And since I only need these first clips because the uh, the other clips I've already determined don't play any differently, I'll just uh, copy those two, hit tab, and then I'm going to paste them in like so. So they've got their own track. So now I've got an audio track up top. I've got the sampler instrument, and then I've got my lead instruments that I just created right here. And usually, you know, this will go down, like I said, you know, 15 or 20 different things. So if you need to raise volumes, you want to make sure everything's highlighted and, you know, kind of you could go in and, and take care of that now. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this as is. But if some of the sounds are low or whatever, you kind of want to take care of it all at the same time. It just saves a lot of time to have everything highlighted. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my cuts because basically each of these different squares is a different note. As you can see, I've set my resolution to one bar because that's how long each of these plays. So then I go through, through the process of going through all my clips and cutting them up all at the same time. It's just another time saver. Okay, so that part's done. And then I li like to highlight our, uh, our first track. I'll hit Command X. By the way, just hit Control instead of Command if you're using a PC. And I'll cut that and paste it up top. And the reason that I do that is just so that I know where I'm at. If I've got 20 or 30 parts, by going through the process of cutting and pasting up on top, I make sure not to uh, duplicate any of my presets in Sampler. Now that we've got this highlighted and ready to go, I'll go ahead and hit Sampler. And I'll make sure that I, I put the zone up just by clicking down here. And I'll drag these down. And now I've got, you know, these are all the different notes, but we want all these highlighted for right now. The first note that I sampled was on C0, so I'm going to start all the notes there, and then I'm going to set all of them to one octave, because that's what they are. If they were note by note, then you would uh, bring them all one note at a time and go that way. And I do that typically for uh, bass sounds and things like that, where I think that the fidelity and the accuracy is real important for each note. And I'll just do that for a, a couple octaves that I think are the most important bass notes. So once I have that, each of these notes has its own uh, separate octave. So I'm just dragging them. As you can see, it shows the, the first note and the last note, which is uh, what you want. You know, if it starts on a C, it's going to end on a B. So I just make sure that these are placed properly. Cool. And then these last ones, the, the upper notes, I'll just drag the last note up. So it's going to play all these higher notes, you know, which are probably not that important. And then the lower notes as well, which are less important. Next thing we need to do is make sure to set the root note so that um, the pitch is playing correctly. So what you'll do is you'll hold down your Alt key and then uh, come in here. As you can see up here, it'll show you what note you're on. So that's C0, click, and I'm done. And I just want to put these in all the, the C's. As you can see, it shows you what note. So this one, I'm off a little bit. And then I just need to move it over to the right and get it on the right note. That one's already correct. C4, C5, C6, and C7. So now I've got all my root notes set. 
and I could actually play this now. Cool. So I've got it in sampler now. The next step that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go to each note. So, you know, this, this part takes a little bit of time, but if you really think about it, each preset is only taking you about, you know, five or six minutes to complete when you kind of get into the rhythm of, of this process. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in, I'm going to actually, I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to set the sustain mode to uh, forward and backward. So when it, when it finishes playing it through, then it'll play it in reverse. And what that's going to do is, is give it um, a nice long note. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So now I want to go to each separate one. I've got this loop section here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of carry the loop. And this is going to be the section that continues to play. So yeah, so I'll set it towards the end here, about midway. And then I'm going to give it a little crossfade so that you know there's no glitches or whatever. And as you can see down here, if you look real close, you can see the, the red line kind of going back and forth on this loop. And it sounds pretty seamless. So great, that's that's our um, that's our first note. And then we just go and we repeat this process. Um, like I said, this is already turned on because we highlighted everything and did it all at once. So that's another time saver. And I'll carry that over, do the crossfade. And I'll just uh, kind of blow through this real quick. Okay, and we're done with that. So now I can play these notes in and hold the notes down and anything that I play is uh, gonna sound pretty good. Oh, it looks like I've goof something here, so I, I need to check this. Looks like that wasn't carried over. Alright. You want to make sure you check these because if you do goof, it's it's going to be noticeable when you play the sound. So, Okay, cool. So we've got our sound and sampler. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we could go and go into our pitch here. Here we go. We want to go into pitch envelope and then we can uh, turn our glide, the portamento or glide on. And if we turn the time up, it becomes more noticeable. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is we're going to end up mapping this so you have control over it. So now I'll just turn this into a group. I can map the portamento time. Cool. That's always something that's that's nice to have set. Uh, you could go in go in here and you could set your LFOs. You may want to go into your your filter section and set up your filters or what have you. There's many things that you can do. You obviously going into the sample and you can set your your sample start and sample end and different things like that. So. I'm not going to go through that whole process now, but this gives you kind of a basic rundown of, of how to set up a sound. Then what I would do is I would go to the next sound, you know, I'd, I'd delete this. 
and bring the next sound in like so. And all I do is I can duplicate this, erase these, and drag that in. So now I go through the same process for the next preset. And then in the end, I will make a chain. So that basically, no matter how many I have, I'll just uh, I'll highlight both of these. Drag it across. Drag all of them across. And then uh, right click and hit distribute ranges equally. And then it'll set equal distance for each of your presets. You'll right click on the orange little uh, chain indicator. And there you go. You got your chain selector. And that will select which sound is going to be played. So it makes it really quick, easy access to your, uh, your presets. So that is something that I've been doing a lot of to speed up my productivity. And I hope that this is something that you could put to use yourself. If you, especially if you've got presets that are on your PC or Mac and they don't translate to the other, you could simply make a, a sampler rack with these presets and then they'll work in either or without a problem. So once you've done that, you just drag your rack and name it, drag it into your, your presets section in here. And I would put it under instrument rack like so, and then name it and you should be cool. Hope that helps.